everyone. Welcome to ML AI 100, Actionable AI Insights Using Translation and Natural Language. I'm sure everybody has had a night of, uh, of good sleep and coming here refreshed on the last day. So welcome, and uh, we're excited to get you started. Today for our speakers, we have myself. I'm Sarah Weldon, the Product Manager for uh, Cloud Translation API and AutoML Translation. Uh, followed by Olga Bergovaya, uh, who is one of our customers, VP of Language Services at We Localize, uh, and then one of my peers, Sudhir Vengari, uh, Product Manager for uh, Natural Language Processing uh, API, as well as Auto, or AutoML Natural Language Processing, and DUAI, which is one of our new products that we launched this week. Uh, and finally, Kieran Kaza will close us out, uh, the Head of Mobile Engineering with DocuSign, who will walk us through some really great use cases uh, for natural language processing with mobile apps. So here's an overview of the session today. Uh, we'll keep working through stuff because we have a pretty jam-packed morning. Um, I'll be starting us off uh, with our language insights. Uh, you might be familiar already today with AutoML translation that we launched last year, as well as Translation API, which has been around for a little bit of a longer time uh, with some very powerful uh, 100 language pairs of translations that can be used with uh, mobile applications to give uh, helping to go to new markets uh, between Japan and India or Spain and Portugal. Um, this API helps you seamlessly translate between content to help your users connect. Additionally, natural language can do things like entity extraction, um, it can do uh, sentiment analysis uh, and even beyond that. So as I said earlier, we, we launched uh, AutoML translation last year and it's, it allows customers to um, bring their own training data to, to further customize and improve our existing translation capabilities to tailor fit to their particular use cases and to strengthen it in, in their language pairs. Um, we have new updates that we've continued to invest in our AutoML platform, um, including uh, in investments in our base platform that will help, other, help our customers by reducing their overall training costs uh, to make improvements in the training efficiency that we've found an observable reduction in 20 to 40% reduction in training time, which re reduces the overall training costs. Um, Additionally, uh, AutoML translation now supports uh, HIPAA compliance, which is great news for our healthcare customers. Translation API, as I said, has been around um, for a while, and today is a really important juncture where we're continuing to advance the features and capabilities to better serve our localization providers as well as streamline capabilities for our developers. So today we are announcing new updates um, with a set of features that will help customers have greater control over their brand data, as well as uh, be able to do longer running uh, operations for translations asynchronously. Um, so this allows you to do more file translation type capabilities. And then finally, uh, Translation API v3 uh, which is we're going to be coming out ahead of V2, uh, we'll be introducing model selection. So for the first time with one API, you'll be able to choose whether you want to use the best model fit for your needs. So you could use our general NMT model, you can use your, pre your existing AutoML custom models that you've built, um, or you can use uh, you know, the, the model of your choice with our capabilities. We'll be starting off uh, today with, with batch translations. Um, so today, you can now use your GCS bucket, um, take files that you have in a source language, say English, um, put that in your GCS bucket uh, in text or HTML is, is accepted, uh, and then place a request to your translation API with your Google project uh, and request the translation to be returned to you uh, in, the, in file format in a GCS bucket with uh, several, you can do multiple languages, and you can use a mix of our pre-trained um, translation models or uh, an AutoML model that you've custom trained yourself. 
This allows you to do a single translation API request that refers to GCS bucket, and in a single call, you will be able to do multiple files, multiple languages, multiple models, all, all in a single request. And then Glossary, which we'll talk more in, in our customer session with We Localize, um, you will be able to have greater granular control over things like your brand IP or location names or uh, you know, other, other specific uh, terminology that is, that is tailored to your company. If you have a small set of training data additionally uh, to, that you wanna start with but is really important to you, so you, for specific terms, you're able to use this with either our pre-trained models or our custom models to be able to have control to ensure that the translations are, are delivering at the right quality and also to reduce the amount of work that your human translators uh, need to do uh, after the translation in machine translation has come out. All of these features, because they are all part of the same translation API v3, will work together. So you can, you can use glossary with batch, you can use batch with custom models, you can use glossary with custom models all through one API. And we localize will come up and talk about how this adds value to their customers as an LSP by combining uh, glossary with these various cases to reduce the, um, the, the overall needs for their company. So, so this is Olga Barogovaya, VP of Language Services with okay. Localize. So um, I represent one of the world's um, largest LSPs. As you can see, we are fourth um, in, the, in the US and seventh um, in the world. This is a little bit about us. So we have um, 15, over 1,500 employees. And damn, I should have brought my glasses, but okay, I didn't. So, but I don't need to read basically. Uh, oh yeah, I have it all here. Well, I can't see that that well. I left my glasses. But anyways, I mean, I know my company inside out, we're pretty big. Uh, and what's important, we serve a variety of domains. And this is where the glossary feature that I'm gonna talk about comes in extremely handy because our customers, some of us come with huge training corpora of million plus translation units, which allows us to avail of AutoML model, which I'm gonna talk about. But some of us will come with just glossary or not even that, so we need to harvest domain glossary from say internet or open source or translation, um, you, um, automation association, so there is just a tiny glossary at our disposal, but the customer would demand domain adaptation or we would work with customer subject matter app, um, experts and build a glossary. So customization is necessary and I will explain why in a minute. So here is the scale of our operation. And what I'm gonna talk about, it's like opinion portal for restaurants today or <laughs> it's like an automotive, automotive company where all they care about is we say, is it a crane or is it like whatever. So here is the localized for you. And this is what we do. And you can see like it's life sciences today, it's legal tomorrow, and it's God knows what uh, day after tomorrow. And these are the services that we provide from digital services and interpretation to, which is probably a growing field, training data for machine learning. So here we are, and this is what we're gonna talk about glossary st case study, where we're gonna compare Google um, pre-trained models, which would be generic models, versus Google pre-trained models with customized glossary, and then we're gonna compare RML models which are trained with customer corpora with a glossary put on top of pre uh, uh, custom models. And what the glossary would do for us is allow us to add even more granularity on top of terminology selection. And then the languages, why did we pick the languages? As you can see, we have a Romance group, then we have Germanic group, then we have a, a Slavic group, and then we have some more representation from the Romance group of languages, and then we have an Asian language. So we basically see what the glossary feature, what the dictionary feature does for different language groups. So obviously we see highly morphological languages, slightly less morphological languages, 
And then we see Asian languages, which basic, basically operate on the ideograph uh, level. So how did we rank the languages? How did we evaluate them? We have highly trained uh, evaluators that used evaluation for adequacy and fluency, and then engine ranking, AB ranking, based on error typology. And that's a methodology, some industry, strand, uh, industry standard methodology combined with the localized proprietary methodology. And then we see um, better quality and user satisfaction, which in our case were services providers. So it translates into higher quality and subsequently higher productivity, which in turn translates for pricing, time to market, and better final output quality for our, our customers. So why customize a glossary? Have a look. Driver, driver, and driver. We provide services, as I said, we provide services across a variety of domains. So do we want driver two when we provide services to a hardware software company? Obviously not. Uh, have a look. Pin, pin, pin. Again, services across a variety of domains. Do you want pin one, pin two, and pin three, depending on the domain? Obviously not. Now, let's have a look at the models. See how, and that's Google pre-trained model with a dictionary injected on top of it. As you can see, dictionary pre-trained models with a um, pre-trained model without a dictionary consistently loses to pre-trained model with a dictionary. And um, you can see that's consistent across all the languages that were ranked. Maybe the difference is not as drastic, but the difference is consistently there. And same goes for the engine ranking across the variety of error types, especially with the terminology when it comes to both in-domain terminology and customer-specific terminology. And when we poll our translators, what bothers them most as they perform post-editing process, terminology is usually the biggest culprit. Because when the translator translates and what the customers are most sensitive to, that's usually terminology. So higher number when it comes to engine ranking for Google pre-trained uh, pre models, as you can see, Higher number uh, means uh, which translator is better uh, with the following error types. Again, you can see that the higher number means fewer errors. And again, you see a pretty consistent picture here. Accuracy and fluency results. Now you look at Google AutoML. Google AutoML rated for accuracy and fluency. And again, you see the same consistent picture. So. Engine ranking for Google AutoML, again, you see the same results. Whenever the dictionary is injected, the translator preference and the ranking is, again, in favor of dictionary. So the summary and next steps. We obviously can see that the gains in accuracy and fluency for all the languages using the glossary feature comes on top both on Google with pre-trained models and on Google, on, t uh, on, on Google with AutoML. So the dictionary injection, what does it do in reality? Whenever you inject the dictionary, you refine the terminology, whether you are using Google pre-trained models or whether you are using Google AutoML and then you are able to refine the, uh, and whether you are able to refine the terminology. When you use Google AutoML, yes, you train with customer data, but still the training data can have some ambiguity. Some translation segments can translate in certain way, some translation segments can translate differently, but the dictionary feature is very specific around the terminology. Now, a couple of things of what we're doing at We Localize. We still make sure that we cleanse for named entities, such as proper names, such as product names, such as geographical names, such as, um, I don't know, location names. And then we also make sure that we're very consistent around specifying do not translate, and we remove all terminology ambiguity. 
So it's also very important how you massage your glossaries, how you massage your dictionaries before you feed them into the Google Dictionary feature. And then next thing, we never just utilize uh, AutoML or Google pre-trained models. They're all just by themselves in isolation. We always make sure that they are a part of the API integration in our translation management system because both Google pre-trained models and Google AutoML are integrated in our end-to-end -end global content de delivery workflow. And that's basically the essence of our partnership. So once all these features are in place and once we've expanded the integration to other languages, we do see tremendous benefits. Again, as I said, we work across a variety of domains and our customers come to us from so many domains and with such variety in how much data they bring to the table that we do see great benefits in this feature. And on that note, I pass the microphone to Sadira, who is the product manager for NLP, and she'll continue. Thank you, Olga. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Sadira, and I lead NLP at uh, Google for products such as cloud natural language, AutoML natural language, and our document understanding AI solution, which just announced this week. Today, I'll be covering an overview as part of this session uh, for two of our products, Cloud Natural Language and AutoML Natural Language. Our Cloud Natural Language API, which is currently in GA, supports various key features. Our content classification APIs enable you to classify content into over 700 different categories, things sports, lifestyle, entertainment, music, so on and so forth. Our sentiment analysis API enables you to detect the prevailing emotion of a writer within a text passage, both in conversations as well as documents. And we do this at a sentence level, at an entity uh, level, and a document level sentiment. Our entity extraction APIs enable you to identify commonly found entities on the web, such as Google's an organization, or um, a beverage is a consumer good, so on and so forth. Our syntax analysis APIs enable you to identify parts of speech as tokens and break down a sentence into its granular, um, granular tokens. Today, we have two new updates on our Cloud Natural Language API. We've added more en entities for invoice-specific entity analysis and extraction, and we've added new languages to our Cloud Natural Language API. First, our invoice-specific entities. Think about entities uh, commonly found on receipts, such as dates, addresses, phone numbers, companies, prices, and numerical values. We've now loaded this all into a pre-trained entity analysis API available to you as part of Cloud Natural Language. This will enable you to automatically convert an unstructured invoice or a receipt into structured data within a matter of seconds using our pre-trained Google model that has been trained on Google data. The good part is that this is, these addresses are already validated for you by Google Maps, so you can easily pipe the address that you've detected, for instance, on this receipt to the Places API on Google Maps to identify, let's say you've found a receipt that has uh, an address of uh, a restaurant, you can identify the lat long values of that restaurant and get further metadata on that restaurant or store all of this in structured format into your own database. Invoice processing becomes very easy in combination with our OCR APIs. You can easily convert all of this unstructured data into structured data using our entity extraction APIs. Second, our new languages. You may already know that our national language APIs support multiple languages. Today, we're adding support for Russian and Japanese for some of our more popular APIs, like our Entity Analysis API, our Entity Sentiment API, and our Syntax Analysis APIs. Let me pause here for a bit before moving on to AutoML Natural Language. A quick show of hands, how many of you have trained a custom natural language model? Quite a few. How many of you have deployed a natural language model in production? A smaller percentage. 
Well, I hope that by the end of this session, you'd be as excited as I am to deploy a natural language model in production within a matter of hours using our AutoML natural language product. Last year, we announced AutoML natural language, a product that enables citizen data scientists to train custom natural language models, specifically a content classification model, without writing a single, single line of code using a simple and high simple and easy to use uh, interface, and the model quality is, is inherently high without any hyperparameter tuning involved or any machine learning expertise involved. Today, we're announcing several new updates to our AutoML natural language product. So we are now HIPAA compliant, so our medical customers, our healthcare customers can easily support content classification, entity extraction, as well as sentiment analysis on any medical document format. We're also adding support. In addition to our content classification models, we're packing in two more models, custom uh, model into uh, AutoML natural language. You can now train a custom entity extraction model using AutoML natural language, as well as a custom sentiment analysis model. All you need to do is come into AutoML natural language with some amount of labeled data. These, this labeled data could be custom classes, custom entities or tags you would like to identify on your documents, or custom sentiment scores tuned to your own business or domain. We enable you to quickly, in a four-step process, that's import your training data, click on train, train your own custom model for about three to four hours, and you get an out-of-the-box custom classification model, custom entity extraction model, custom sentiment model that can start predicting so that you can get insights that are relevant and tuned to your business, your own domain. Let me deep dive a little bit into our AutoML sentiment analysis feature that we just announced today. AutoML sentiment enables you to do domain-specific sentiment analysis on your documents or conversations. Why is domain-specific sentiment analysis important? One of our customers, Avalon Solutions, has used AutoML sentiment analysis to build an empathetic chatbot. Now, this is a stress coaching app for workplaces that enables the chatbot to respond with empathy when it detects stress within a conversation. So if an employee were to type into a chatbot, it's really hard right now, or I'm really stressed at work, or work, uh, my day is going really bad today, the chatbot responds, sorry to hear that, and this is all working on top of AutoML sentiment. So the Avalon Solutions chatbot has AutoML entity extraction, sorry, AutoML sentiment analysis built in to detect stress within the conversation so that it can start responding and starting to create a more engaging customer experience with uh, the sentiment analysis feature. This can improve the quality of predictions and we've seen that the, gen, uh, the AutoML sentiment model performs with a higher accuracy or higher precision than a generic sentiment model to detect emotion or sentiment scores that are very tuned to uh, a conversation or um, a, a, a certain business domain. And, and it does not really apply just to a conversational use case. Think about document-specific sentiment scores that may be relevant to detect uh, sentiment on a financial uh, statement or earnings statements. Volumes of earnings statements are generated every quarter, so we can use AutoML sentiment models to predict analyst sentiment towards those earnings statements. We can use AutoML sentiment to detect the market sentiment towards news articles. Or on a lighter note, you can also use AutoML sentiment, pun unintended, to do um, sentiment analysis on musical lyrics. Let's say there is a tweet called, Delta, I was waiting on the tarmac for two hours. Now, this is a totally made up tweet. Sorry, Delta. You may be familiar with our sentiment analysis um, API. Now, if we were to pipe this into our sentiment analysis API, as you can see, the sentiment score is neutral. Our sentiment analysis API doesn't know that waiting on the runway for two hours is a bad thing. Let's try to apply AutoML sentiment analysis to make this better. 
Now, I found a data set on Crowd, Crowdflower that is specific to airline tweets. Multiple airlines are listed, and this is a custom sentiment score from zero to two, zero being the most negative, and two being the most positive. So I've taken this data set and pointed a link to a GPS bucket with that data set on AutoML natural language. All I need to do is specify that this is the custom sentiment scale that I'm going to be supplying AutoML natural language, zero to two. Quickly verify that I have my labels in order and click on train. Now within a matter of three hours, I get a custom sentiment model, no code involved. All I need to do is check the precision and recall, look at the confusion matrix, check if my sentiment model is confused on all of these three labels and go back and tune my training data if needed. Look at the false positives and negatives. Now, as you can see, our AutoML sentiment model, our airline sentiment model, knows that more legroom is definitely good and losing luggage is not that fun and waiting on the tarmac is probably not that fun either. So that's sentiment analysis for you. Our third AutoML natural language model custom entity extraction, enables you to identify domain-specific entities within your document. Now, why would domain-specific entities um, be relevant to your business? Imagine you have a document, uh, or you're an energy company with oil and gas reservoir parameters that you'd like to extract from within your documents. Our regular entity analysis API would not be, is tuned mostly for detecting web-based entities, so it may not perform really well in detecting, let's say, uh, the density, the pressure, viscosity values of a certain reservoir in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, let's say you have doctor's patient notes that you're trying to analyze and you'd like to extract specific symptoms or diseases from within that, um, within that patient note. Uh, you could be an, uh, well, the invoice example that we just saw, we are able to predict, well, prices, numbers, phone, uh, phone numbers, so on and so forth, but they may be specific dates, like billing dates, supplier dates, so on and so forth, various variations of entities within those documents that you would like to tune and tag on those documents. AutoML entity extraction enables you to do just that without any code involved. Again, all you'll have to do is provide some examples, and we ask for at least 10 mentions of each entity type, 100 for a good model, so that you can start building a custom entity extraction API that performs really well for your own business-specific use cases or your own documents, domain-specific documents. Let's launch into a quick demo. Today we're going to talk about how to build a custom entity extraction model with Google Cloud AutoML Natural Language. If you've played with the Natural Language API before, you might have seen that it can extract common entities from text, like the fact that Google is an organization, or that iPhone is a consumer good. But what if you want to tag more domain-specific entities, like types of diseases or the specialized terminology you might find in legal documents or patents? For that, we'll use AutoML to train and build a custom entity extraction model. First, we'll need a labeled data set. Today, we'll build a model that analyzes patents from Google's public patent data set. Using Google Vision's OCR API, we extracted the text from a set of PDFs of patents. Here, we've stored that data in a JSONL file, which is the data type that AutoML Natural Language expects, and we've manually tagged within that text the character offsets of the custom entities we want to extract. AutoML Natural Language expects to read our JSONL files from a Google Cloud bucket. In addition to our JSONL data, we'll make a CSV file that tells it where in Google Cloud we've stored our data. Here we specify which data files should be used for training, validation, and testing of our model. If you don't break your data set into these three files, AutoML Natural Language will do it for you automatically. Now let's upload our data. Here in the AutoML Natural Language interface, we'll create a new data set. To import the data, we give AutoML Natural Language the CSV file we made, and then we wait. Importing data can take a couple of minutes to finish, but you'll get an email when it's done. Once our data is imported, we can view individual examples to make sure they were labeled correctly. We can check where in the text different custom entities were annotated. We can also annotate a new entity right here from within the tool. 
Notice that we can also tell how many examples we've got for each label. We can begin training a model by navigating over to the Train tab and clicking Start Training. Training a model can take up to three hours. Behind the scenes, AutoML will do a neural architecture search to find the best model it can. So now's a good time to take a coffee break. You'll get an email when the model's finished training. When training is finished, we'll be able to see our model here in the Training tab. We can see how well it did by clicking here to see full evaluation. Here in the Evaluate panel, we can see the performance of our model on different labels. The metrics we'll want to look at are precision and recall. Precision tells us of the snippets the model labeled applicant, how many were really applicants. Recall tells us of all the real applicants in our data set, what percent were accurately recognized by the model. We can also scroll down to see where the model correctly labeled applicant, these are the true positives, and where it accidentally mislabeled text as applicant, or false positives. In the Test and Use tab, we can start actually using our model, hosted by Google. To do that, we first have to deploy our model, which could take a few minutes. Next, we can try to extract custom entities on a new text snippet. There we go. Here are the custom entities we extracted. That's all for now. Have fun modeling. That's exciting. Well, that was the demo. With that, I would love to invite Kiran Kaza, Director of Engineering at DocuSign, who's used AutoML natural language for auto-tagging documents. Let's find out what he's done. Thank you. Thanks, Odera. All right. Hey, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kiran. I lead mobile engineering at DocuSign and some key AI, fun key AI machine learning initiatives. Um, you probably know DocuSign today because you used it to, to e-sign an important moment in your life. Maybe you're buying a new house, or maybe a new car. But today, DocuSign is more than an e-signature company. We are an agreements cloud company and helping our customers modernize their systems of agreement. Part of modernizing systems of agreement, we are focused on delivering best-in-class products for preparing agreements, signing agreements, managing agreements, and acting on your agreement. As we think about modernizing systems of agreement, we are adding intelligence to our agreement process to eliminate and reduce manual actions. That's where we partnered with Google for auto-tagging. Uh, while I'm on DocuSign, I would love to share a quick uh, story. I, this, this one I love. The, so this was four plus years ago when I started working with DocuSign. Uh, one of the evenings I was going back home on BART, and I don't know, for people who are not local, BART is our local commuter train from downtown back to suburb. So as going back on the train, uh, this gentleman walks over to me and says, dude, do you work at DocuSign? And yeah, I do. He's like, I love DocuSign. I just bought a home and I signed everything. It was so easy. And if you talk to many of my colleagues at DocuSign, they will share similar I love DocuSign stories. And it is such a great honor to work for a product which meaningfully touches people's life and such a huge impact as they are dealing with important moments and issues of their life. So that's us, that's we, who, uh, who we are at DocuSign. Now let me talk about the problem we're trying to solve. Today, when our customers send documents out for signing um, using our web or mobile app, they have to manually place tags. So what is tagging? What does this word tag mean? Tag is a DocuSign term used for identifying form input field where customers can input data and, put, and also draw their signatures. So let's take an example. There's an NDA document that I send out for signing. You would expect your customer to input the name, the date they signed the document, the signature itself. All these different input fields are called as tags. And as you can see on the animated GIF there, manual tagging can be done. We do it today. But it does delay time, uh, time to value and it is error prone. Our goal is to seamlessly identify tags based on different tag types and category and place them on the document so that user doesn't have to place a tag, move it around, make sure it's properly X and Y coordinated and it is matching the label for which the tag belongs to. So when we thought about solving this problem and why Kiran, why, why did mobile pick up this problem? Imagine tagging or placing tags on this form factor. It is, it is not fun. 
we we definitely wanted to make this process this for my domain it was a big problem and i tried many things we tried ocr we tried ocr with custom code none of them really worked at the scale at which docsign operates and the different use cases my customers had the other different document types i had none of them really really worked so the only way to do this right was using ai and machine learning so we partnered with google and the first question was why google i think there are three key reasons i call them out one i believe google has the best best in class product for vision deep learning ai and auto and uh, natural language ai i do think that they have best in class product there uh, the second key factor is auto ml is a very powerful tool which helps us manage or model accuracy and performance and finally partnering with google engineering and product team was a lot of fun i being an engineer myself i had a lot of fun working with google team partnering with them because our scale of solution solving this problem could not be done uh, in the first attempt by ourselves so we needed some help there so essentially we had three different models and i'm going to walk you through the different architecture how we solve this problem pretty soon um, but we have three different models first we were we are using vision ocr we are using auto ml vision object detection model and we are using our um, auto ml natural language entity extraction models and all these three different models we trained with thousands and thousands of documents and hundreds and thousands of tags that's the only way we could get the accuracies we are seeing right now so let me uh, before I actually talk about the architecture let me demo and show you guys um, how this really works uh, can we switch to demo please So here I have my mobile device, and the first thing I'm doing is launching uh, our DocSign app. Uh, as you can see, there's a create button for somebody to create a document. As I mentioned before, the use case is somebody's trying to create a document. Um, so I create a document. I load a document first. Um, I'm from my from my local file directory. I'll pick a NDA. Uh, the document is loaded. Next thing, in typical DocSign world, any NDA would require two different people agreeing to an nda so we call them signers in this case i'm have two different uh, test users i'll use tamara my first signer add another recipient here in this case i'll use martin so these are my two different test users i'm using for signing the next thing i want to do is load the document and send that out for uh, signing now as you can see in literally instantly without user having to do any interaction the entire document is tagged all the fields i'm zooming in all the fields are tagged if you go look at the bottom of the document both the recipients who need to sign are tagged ready to go and all i need to do is long press and assign few fields to martin and this document is ready to be sent this and so if you can imagine like the entire process of tagging where i had to manually place tags make sure they align all that is gone so some of you might be thinking can that's a simple use case nda had like 10 fields dude come on really is it that hard so let's take a more complex use case i have another example here so i'm using a us passport form so i don't know how many you but i recently renewed a passport form there are at least 350 fields on this document if not more so i'm going to take a us passport form load it uh, for the sake of uh, using a user i'm going to continue using tamara and now i kick off tagging and you can see now this is instantaneous the entire document is tagged the date the check boxes now let's go through the rest of the fields there it goes guys look at look at the beauty of this all these fields are tagged the signature tag is tagged the whole document is tagged and ready to be sent uh back to the slides please so as simple as the demo was as quick as the demo was uh that's the beauty of auto tagging that's the beauty of ai and machine learning you can really simplify and eliminate manual processes that otherwise would have taken a lot of time for a normal users to do so i'm going to now explain how we actually solve this problem uh at i'm going to start at 
uh, three different levels. At the document level, which is simple business. Uh, for a business owner, what does it mean? And then I'm going to talk about the architecture and how the models really work. At the core document level, let's take an example. I'm loading a W9 form. Uh, I want to use this for tagging. The first thing we do is extract text, the OCR, the OCR aspect of, hey, what are the different text components in this document? The next thing I do is identify bounding boxes. Uh, for people who have done machine learning on vision, they know bounding boxes is uh, the technical machine learning term for tags. And sorry to throw another term on you, but they're called as bounding boxes. Once we get the results back from both of them, we, we process them to form field analysis where we apply more contextual meaning of the bounding box with the document. For example, if there's a sign here and there's a tag next to it, it is a signature tag. It's not a text field. So applying that concept is, uh, is the form field analysis we do. And then eventually, as you see on the screenshot, by the way, that's coming out from our auto-tagging machine learning algorithm. So there's a completely tagged a W9 form ready to be used. Uh, the next, I'm going to a level deeper, talk about how it's actually architected. Um, a user makes a call to a GCP endpoint. We internally call an uh, app engine. We need app engine because I'm not making a straight call to single model. We actually have multiple models who do different work. So we want to do some orchestration there, and app engine helps us do that orchestration. The first call we make is a simultaneous call to OCR vision model and auto ML uh, vision object detection model. Um, then the idea of those two models is extracting tests and identifying the bounding boxes. The results that we get back, we feed back to, our, to the uh, app engine. App engine then forwards that request to auto ML natural language entity extraction model, which does form field uh, analysis and processing. And those results get fed back to app engine where we do cleanup. Why we need to do cleanup is there are a lot of times tags will overlap if there are two tags very close to each other. So there is a lot of noise and you want to eliminate some of those noise. And so there's some, some of that logic is built in our app engine side. It returns the result back to cloud endpoint. And finally, uh, we give the results back to the users. So it looks, uh, it looks a little complicated because for, for the scale, DocuSign operates. We operate at billions and billions of documents and transactions. We had to, we had to use multiple models to come, back, to come back and provide the proper results that you saw in the demo. Now let's talk about how do the models really operate. So now we understood how document flow works, how the architecture works. The next step is understanding how models work. Again, this is a very simplistic view. Internally, the models are more complex, but just for sake of understanding. Let's say the vision object detection at, the, at your right at the very top identified something as a text tag. So the category it identified, hey, I'm looking, I looked at the document, it looks like it's a text tag. And the OCR model found, hey, this text tag is between words saying sign in favor of. Okay, now the, when we merge the results, you see sign, there's a text tab, and there's sign in favor of. So this tag actually is a signature tag. So natural language entity extraction classifies uh, bounding boxes and represents them in the context of document text. And now the result is you can see the category of those doc, uh, the category of the tag is signature. So that's the beauty of natural language uh, uh, entity extraction models. So I, well, implementation of this is a lot, lot more complicated. It does take more time. Uh, but I'm going to take a step back and talk about what does it mean for users' point of view? What, what does it mean for the business? We actually solve three problems. At the very foundation, we are making agreement processes faster. We are eliminating manual steps. It becomes easier for customers to use. Secondly, it's once, once you apply machine learning logic, it's less error prone. It is a lot more, uh, lot more user friendly. There's more adoption, so it's more reliable. And like any other machine learning project, it is self-learning and intelligent. As these models are used more, as these models are seeing more data and get trained more, they just keep getting better over time. So that's, in, in business view, we are making a process fast, reliable, and intelligent. Finally, uh, that's pretty much how DocSign solved uh, our problem with the help of Google. And I'll pass it back to Sudera to uh, walk us through closing.
Thank you, Kieran. Since launch of OML Natural Language, we have seen applications across multiple industries, from real estate to news, media, travel, music, energy, voice of customer analytics, and we are extremely humbled by the amount of traction we are seeing. Thousands of AutoML natural language models have been built to classify security documents for GDPR compliance, HR files, again, to track uh, GDPR compliance, or to classify certain document downloads as sensitive document downloads. We've seen various applications in, in news editorial processes. We think that we are able to apply natural language to solve various business specific use cases across multiple domains. And we are constantly um, actually excited and sometimes surprised by some of the innovative applications of our technologies, our NLP technologies, towards solving real business needs. We'd love to get more feedback from you as you start to try uh, try using AutoML natural language, please feel free to reach out to us. This is where you can find more information about our products, our natural language products, our AutoML natural language products, and our translate products. We also have a session on more advanced use cases and a solution called Document Understanding AI. Uh, a deep dive of that will be available at one o'clock today in uh, one of my other sessions. Please feel free to attend that. Your feedback is always welcome. Thank you so much for your time today. I'll stick around for more questions right after.